Good evening, Affordable Plane Builders and YouTubers. This is Terry A. Dare in Houston, Texas with the Affordable Plane. Uh, another casual update here. Uh, we've been working on uh, tuning up this engine. And you can probably see uh, the previous video, some of the uh, uh, works and experiments that I've gone through. Uh, issue we were having was uh, this this uh, carburetor right here was uh, indicating a hot cylinder no matter where we put it and uh, we had talked to Jimmy McIntosh and uh, Jimmy and I talked uh, in detail about um, you know what we could do to uh, possibly find out what the problem was and in the end you know we identified all of our needle jets our main jet pilot jets everything uh, to make sure that uh, we're running the correct specs, and of course, all that checked out. So, um, once we figured out that this carburetor was the one that was causing the cylinder head temperatures to be high, and and by high, I mean on this engine, I shouldn't be expecting more than about 500 degrees in climb power, uh, which is about 50 one to 5300 rpm for the hearth and i was getting some temperatures that were pretty pretty up there but as stated in a previous video um i did get a chance to talk to matt today and matt also uh, backed up what jimmy said uh, go ahead and try the next size jet so matt is sending me from uh, recreational power and engineering uh, four new main jets, uh, two 175s and two 180s, and uh, we're going to install those once they come in, and we're going to see if that helps lower our high-end temperature. Uh, so far, we're doing okay on our mid-range, and uh, we're doing okay on our idle, although I imagine I can do a little bit better, you know, once we get that top end sorted. But... Uh, had some interesting uh, conversations today with Officer Lopez uh, of the Houston Police Department. He showed up, and um, apparently one of my neighbors, and I know it wasn't the one over here, and it wasn't the one way over there, because I have a real good relationship with those guys, and have been in communication with them and let them know that if uh, the noise from this airplane is ever causing a problem, they let me know. And uh, so far, nobody's had a problem with it. They tell me it just sounds kind of like I'm mowing my grass or I have a weed blower, uh, leaf blower, like those backpack styles. So uh, neither one of them have a problem with it. And I try to make it a point not to start this engine up anytime but, uh, before 10 a.m. And, and not to have it running anytime, you know, after about 6 or 7 p.m. <clears throat> So from the hours of 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., I use that time to kind of um, tune my engine and experiment. And I think that's a per perfectly reasonable time. But like I said, I had two visits today from uh, Houston's Finest. And uh, the first lady that came out, she was very intrigued. In fact, she came in and had a whole bunch of questions about the airplane. And I walked her around and she seemed to be very amazed that... Uh, I built this in my garage. Um, anyway, after talking to her for about 30 minutes, uh, she concluded that there really wasn't any problem um, and wished me good luck, and she was on her way. Well, about two or three hours later, uh, I guess it was about 4 o'clock by this time, uh, I was just fixing to wrap everything up, but I was checking the uh, propeller pitch one more time, just ver verifying that uh, nothing had changed. And uh, here come Officer Lopez, the second officer to visit me. And he had stated that he had also had a noise complaint. And, uh, well, after speaking with the first officer, I decided to go ahead and measure the decibel levels of my engine as it was running, um, all the way up to full power. And at full power, I wasn't making more than about 70, 75 decibels. And, of course, that was right here next to the engine. When I walked away down the end of my driveway, it dropped by about 15 to 20 decibels. So, 
I'm not too sure at the time who was calling the police on me, but he did indicate that it sounded like a lady, the police officer did. And, you know, once again, HPD, once they showed up, they also were very intrigued uh, at the build, and we went through the build manual, we talked about aviation, we talked about skydiving, and I shared part 103 with him. And I also let him know that I knew a little bit about the um, Harris County codes as far as the noise levels. And we do have a uh, 65 decibel limitation at the property line for continuous noise. And um, I was able to take uh, my decibel meter and walk it out to the property line and find out that, you know, I'm hitting about 60 decibels um, maybe 65 on the high end on my property line so I'm well within the limits and the officer was like you know well he didn't really know a whole lot about the statutes or the rules about what you can run in your driveway and what you can't run in your driveway long story short <laughs> he, he just basically told me keep on doing what you're doing he goes I just had to show up and you know I've got to write a report because the lady said she wanted to file a report and I said that's fine I was cooperative with him and gave him whatever information he wanted and uh, he says you know there's probably nothing wrong with it at all she's an elderly lady over there and I'm not trying to disturb her but I do understand she called um, on my neighbors the other day who were remodeling their house and you know I understand people want their their peace and quiet but in a neighborhood, in a big city, you're going to have noise, especially during the daytime. And I don't want to make anybody upset, but I think I'm well within my rights as far as the noise consideration. So, police department, you know, they bid me a good day. He told me, just go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. He says, I don't see any problem here right now. Um, you know, if I get another complaint, you know, we'll let you know and... He has my phone number, so uh, I told him, just give me a call if there's any other issues, and I'll be happy to talk to them, and, uh, you know, even if they want to come out and take a noise reading of their own, which they probably won't do, but if they did, I told them I'd cooperate with them, and that basically this is not an ongoing thing. This is nearing the end of my build before I get ready to take this thing out to the airport, and I am just really trying to make sure that everything is ready to go so that once we're there, we don't have any issues to deal with. Uh, silly little issues like a temperature reading that's a little bit hot. So it all worked out for the better. Some of the things I did today, I talked to Bill Larson at uh, Oregon Aircraft Design. He's the fellow I bought the engine from. And one of the suggestions he had was for me to just verify that you know my sensors are are working properly and so one of the things i did is i went ahead and i disconnected the sensors from the cylinders and i heated up a pot of uh, water on the stove i got a rolling boil going to it and i brought it out here and just set it on top of the airplane i just laid my little nifty pot holder there and set a pot of boiling water on the on the fuselage and I used uh, two of these uh, thermometers like this and I put it in there so two of these gave me a reading of about 180 degrees and they were the analog uh, thermometers were working great so uh, I took the probes and I ran an alligator clip from the engine to the probe and then I dunked them in the water and then I checked my engine information system over there to see what kind of temperature they were reporting and in, they were reporting within about 10 degrees of what the analog meters were doing so that was good for me i i figured that was close enough and uh they are they are reading the temperatures properly at least within 10 degrees of the analog and uh so i just kind of determined those were okay the other thing i wanted to do is i wanted to check out the um, exhaust gas probes and so I attempted to take them out but uh, 
boy they're in there real good and uh you can see that one right there that's in center frame it's got a little jb weld on it now i was able to get it loose but once i got it loose i noticed all the threads came with it except for about two to three threads left on the end of it and um i was able to get it tightened back down on those three threads but in addition to it i just put a little jb weld up in there um just to satisfy me that that's going to hold uh, under the vibrations uh, even with the uh, connection loose it was still quite tight in there and i ended up just putting a blowtorch uh, on those just to verify that i was getting the proper readings and and that what i believed to be number one was actually number one and what i believed to be number two was actually number two um, on my screen in the cockpit and again that's on the, the EIS so there's a lot of functions on here and this one here shows all four these two are for the cylinders and these two are for the exhaust and I know this is the number one cylinder up front and I know that's the number two cylinder but I was confused I thought maybe I might have had these two swapped where maybe this was number two and then this was number one. So that's why I put the, the heat on them to get a register off of them to verify it. So in the end, actually just putting the torch on it and heating up this side, it got hot. So I knew that number one's in the right location, number two's in the right location. So now we know that everything's working and it's all in the right location. It's going to be just a matter of uh, in the next day or so, Matt is sending out the... Uh, the new main jets for me and so I'll replace the main jet on uh, this carburetor here and we'll we'll try it again and see how we're doing on our temperatures um, other than that everything else is pretty much ready to go uh, I've noticed that there are some small little things such as uh, a spring which was actually a very small spring to begin with I bought that at the hardware store and I knew when I bought it that I would probably be replacing it but the vibration of it did cause it to come loose today so I'm going to be finding uh, something more adequate for that but that's part of the building and growing pains and that's also part of why I like to run this thing up and make sure everything is uh, going to hold together so that when I do carry this thing off to the airport anything that looks like it's going to rattle loose or come come apart or or not hold hopefully I'll know exactly what it is but like I said that was just a little galvanized spring very thin metal and I'm really not surprised that it broke so I'm gonna be finding something a little bit uh, better for it and fix that uh, the other thing that I notice is on the other side there I have a battery box and I apologize, I can't just walk around right now. I'm low on the uh, power, so I'm, I'm filming while I'm tethered to the cord. But uh, that battery box that I, I fabricated some months ago, uh, I fabricated it, I believe, out of, um, oh, I think it was 32 thousandths aluminum. It turns out that is just really too thin because, again, with the motor vibrations on the firewall and the rest of the airplane, I'm starting to detect some uh, little tears in the metal so again I'm gonna have to pull that off and we'll fab something up that'll be a little bit better but those are the growing pains that we go through and I thought it was quite interesting that uh, I had a visit today from uh, both the constable and the Houston Police Department and both of them were more interested in the airplane than they were scolding me so um you know I, I i guess kudos to them and uh you know i really enjoyed talking to them just as i talked to everybody about the uh, project but they didn't seem to be too bothered by it and i guess i'll know uh more later if if it goes anywhere but i doubt that it will so anyway guys um that's it just wanted to give you all an update on what i was doing uh you guys know I've I've pulled those carburetors apart and gone through them. Uh, we even went through the fuel system last night, drained all the fuel out just to check and make sure that we didn't have any crud in the fuel lines. 
and I'm thinking once we get those new uh, main jets in, uh, that I'm, I'm very hopeful that that's going to take care of that uh, problem with the hot cylinder head temperatures. So, until the next video, guys, I bid y'all farewell. Y'all have a good night. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, please subscribe and share. Don't forget to hit the, uh, what is that, the little bell up there. And um, comment on it and let me know uh, what you guys think. Um, talked to a fella from India yesterday. At, these videos are really making the, uh, <laughs> the rounds around the world. But a um, fellow from India called me. Um, and also a guy from Brazil. I think I mentioned that to you guys. He uh, was interested in having me build him a set of wings. So I don't know if I'm quite at that level yet. But it is amazing to see how far we're reaching. And I really appreciate every single one of uh, you guys subscribing. And don't forget to share the video. We're trying to uh, get ourselves up to... Um, you know a thousand subscribers and I think right now we're at 380 so if you haven't yet subscribed subscribe okay guys thank you for watching Terry Adair Houston Texas with the Affordable Plane signing out